In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we celebrate the octave of Easter. The, every day this week has been a holy day of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Today is also known as Divine Mercy Sunday as Jesus reveals his mercy to the apostles in the upper room. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water, you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, be pleased in your faithful love to bless this salt you have created. For it was you who commanded the prophet Elisha to cast salt into water, that impure water might be purified. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that wherever this mixture of salt and water is sprinkled, every attack of the enemy may be repulsed, and your Holy Spirit may be present to keep us safe at all times. Through Christ our Lord. Joy from peak to valley, laughing and clear your 
Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God in the Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the peoples at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. 
And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still be. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief 
you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. This Sunday is known as Divine Mercy Sunday, as proclaimed by Pope John Paul II in the year 2001, adding it to the official church calendar so that uh, the whole Catholic Church worldwide now celebrates this Sunday as Divine Mercy Sunday. This started as a devotion of St. Faustina, who Jesus appeared to in prayer and revealed himself uh, in the image that you see behind me here. That is the image of Jesus appearing in the upper room to the disciples, and it says he showed them his hands and his side. And from his side flowed these rays of red and white, which signify blood and water, the blood that we receive in the Eucharist, and the water which is given to us in baptism. It is a source of divine mercy. And underneath the image are the words, Jesus, I trust in you, which is our prayer to place our trust in the Lord, which means believing in his love for us. The definition of mercy, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, is one person's compassionate heart for another's unhappiness. We see in the Acts of the Apostles, the disciples or the apostles are doing the same thing that Jesus did when he was here on earth. Many people were brought to him and laid at his feet who were sick, and he healed them. And here we see with the apostles the same is true. They are brought with cots and mats, many who are sick, even just so the shadow of St. Peter would fall on them as, as he walked by, and that would be enough to heal them. A large number came, bringing the sick and those disturbed by evil spirits, and it says they were all cured. So the apostles began to heal people in the same way that Jesus did, which means it is still Jesus who is healing them, but now through the ministry of the church. Through the sacraments is the way that Jesus continues to administer his grace. In the second reading, St. John, who is known as the beloved disciple, has a vision of heaven, and he sees the heavenly worship, one like a son of man standing at the altar. This is Jesus. And rather than saying, hi, old friend, John falls down prostrate on the ground before him because he is overcome with awe and wonder at the presence of the Lord. And Jesus reveals his name to him, saying, I am the one who lives. In other words, he who is. Or another way of saying, I am the life, literally, in Greek. Jesus could not be defeated then by death because he is life itself. What is the cause of death then? So often people want to blame God for death, but how can life itself be the cause of death? Can't be. And the scriptures say God is not the cause of death, nor does he delight in the destruction of the living. In the face of death, we see rather that the Lord mourns and weeps. Just like it says when Lazarus, Jesus' friend, died, it says Jesus wept. Death is the effect of sin. And sin, therefore, is an offense against life. To love means to will the good of the other. Joseph Pieper, in his book on the theological virtues, describes love as this. Another way of saying I love you is, I am delighted that you exist. 
Now, we may look at ourselves and recognize how we don't always have this kind of love for others to be able to say to everyone, I am delighted that you exist. But the focus today is not so much on that, but it is on the Lord's love for us. Jesus is looking at you and saying, I love you. I am delighted that you exist. I cherish your friendship. And so Jesus appeared in the upper room to the apostles. The doors were locked there. They were filled with fear and anxiety, with self-recrimination because they ran off when the Lord was arrested, and hopelessness. He's dead now. But none of that matters. Jesus passes through the doors and appears to them anyway in the upper room and says, peace be with you. He forgave them. And then he showed them his hands inside, which is the love flowing out of his heart. He has the wounds that he received when he was on the cross, and these are still there, not to cause Jesus pain anymore, but to be a source of love and mercy for us, ever pouring out of his heart. When Jesus was on earth, he also, in addition to healing people, forgave their sins. Frequently, he would say, your sins are forgiven. And so he also gives this power to the apostles to forgive sins. When he says, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. And so this is the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of penance, by which Jesus himself forgives us through the ministry of the priest in the sacrament. The forgiveness of sins is a greater healing even than physical healing. It is spiritual healing in our soul. And so Jesus asked St. Faustina to establish this feast, the second Sunday of Easter, as the Divine Mercy Sunday. He said, On that day, my floodgates of my mercy and grace are wide open. Anyone who goes to confession that day will receive complete forgiveness and, forg and healing and remission of all sin and punishment. Do not be afraid to approach the seat of mercy, he says. Even if your sins are as scarlet, I will make you white. Who doesn't want to receive the words of love from God, in which he looks upon you and says, I am delighted that you exist. Let us make our profession of faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is the Father of all mercies. In him we place our trust as we offer our prayers and petitions. Our response, risen Lord, hear our prayer. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the Church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy, we pray. Risen Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For peace in the world, that God will guide all political leaders in ending violence and protecting the innocent, especially in Ukraine, we pray. Risen Risen Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For our young people who were confirmed this weekend, that the Holy Spirit will provide them with wisdom, courage, and the desire to accept God's plan for their lives as it is revealed to each of them, we pray. Risen Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people preparing for First Communion next weekend, that they may find nourishment and strength in the Eucharist throughout their lives, we pray. Risen Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who doubt, like Thomas, that God's love and presence may become known to them, we pray. Risen Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the farmers receive the weather they need for planting, and may the seed and soil bear much fruit, we pray. Risen Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Leo Sauls and Deacon Ed and Joanne Benarens, whom we remember at Mass this weekend, that they may experience the fullness of the resurrection, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we need your mercy. As you answer our prayers, fill us with the joy that comes from hope and grant us the life that conquers death. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their honor. 
celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just. The sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We have received Jesus in the Eucharist. He appears in the room of our heart and says, peace be with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday this afternoon from 2.30 to 4 here in the church. We'll have the Chaplet of Divine Mercy prayed. Also, there will be adoration of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament here on the altar. And then confessions will also be available. So that's from 2.30 to 4 this afternoon. Even if you can't make it for the whole time, you can still come for part of it. Devotional books for Easter season are available in the gathering space. One dollar donation. Next Sunday, the Knights of Columbus will be hosting a pancake and sausage breakfast from 9 until 12.30, free will offering to given to Crest. Also, next Sunday, the Knights of Columbus will be having their Tootsie Roll Drive, uh, taking donations for our local ARC program. We need volunteers to bring up the gifts at weekend mass. Please sign up in the gathering space. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ, in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven Amen. and may the blessing of almighty god the father and the son and the holy spirit come down on you and remain with you forever Amen. go in peace alleluia alleluia Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits. Amen. Rejoice again, I say. 
Sorge, I see. 